Hello friends, I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurig. Today is Friday, the 1st of November, All Saints Day, 2024. It's five o'clock, so it's time for a bit of wine and the word, or for me today, it's teaology. Um, I won't be having any wine until a bit later on. So whatever you are using to mark a transition from one part of the day to the next, or perhaps even one part of the week, to the next, moving into the weekend. I hope you will have that with you as we come together around the Word of God and look for what God has been doing among us of late. Um, it's a great way to mark a transition to pay attention to what God is doing. So we always begin by sharing a bit of what's going on in our lives, some high and low points that are happening. So my own high point of today, I suspect, is still to come, which is why I'm still having tea. But tonight I'm headed down to the company section of the Boys Brigade. I'm talking with them all throughout this session about what difference do different things make. So like last time I was with them, we talked about what difference does forgiveness make? Like why does it matter if we forgive or if we behave differently because we choose to forgive someone? Um, so we talked about that and about the Joseph story in that way. And then tonight we'll be talking about what difference does something else make? I'm not going to give it away just yet. Maybe I'll tell you next week. But then afterwards, um, some of the younger boys have asked if they can interview me for their new podcast. <laughs> they, they said, we have some questions for you, but we're not going to tell you what they are in advance. So I think that's probably going to be really fun, uh, but also a little nerve wracking. But I think that will probably be the high point of my day. Often a visit to the Boys Brigade is a high point of my day. So I'm looking forward to that a little later on this evening. Um, the low point of my day today, I think, is that one of my cats is coughing sometimes, but I haven't had a chance to make a vet appointment, and I just know that when I do, he won't do it in the office. <laughs> so, like, that's not great. Um, so I'm a little worried about that, but hoping that maybe it will stop or that I can catch it on video so I could maybe send it to them in advance and see if they think we need an appointment. Um, so yeah, that's my high and low points today. Whatever yours might be, I hope you will share them with someone. It matters that we share our lives together. It's building up the connective tissue of the body of Christ, the things that hold us together. So today is All Saints Day, the 1st of November, which is traditionally a day when, um, and by traditionally I mean for 1,500 years or nearly, um, this is the day that the church has recognized and remembered those who have gone on ahead, our ancestors in the faith, the people who now make up our great cloud of witnesses. So in many places, we remember those who have died in the past year, like since last year at this time, and we will take a moment to remember in a little while, but um, first I want for us to talk about the ancestors in the faith. And one of the best places for us to look for this is in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. So I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I would love for you to go and read the entire chapter because I think um, it's really beautiful and gives us a little template for remembering the ways that God is at work in people's lives. So I'm just going to give us some snippets throughout the chapter. So we begin at verse one. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. And then we get this litany of the saints. By faith, Abel, and Cain, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Esau, by faith, Sarah. And then this beautiful moment in verse 13, all these died in faith without having received the promises, 
but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of what they left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. And then we continue the litany. Again, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Joseph. By faith, Moses and Moses' parents. By faith, Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, Moses did many things. He gets a long set of this chapter. By faith, the people of Israel passing through the Red Sea. By faith, they encircled Jericho. By faith, Rahab the prostitute. And then in verse 32, maybe one of my favorite sentences ever. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, and on and on. Time would fail me to tell of all these saints. And then in verse 39, Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, catch that therefore, it's important. Apart from us, they could not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Therefore, because they could not, apart from us, be made perfect, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So let us lay aside every weight and run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I love this chapter because it's such a reminder to us that ordinary people have done extraordinary things through God's power and that there is not enough time in the world to tell all of those stories, all of the ways that regular people have been used by God to do incredible things. And sometimes it might seem like those incredible things are really small in the moment. Like imagine Moses's parents hiding him away when he's first born. It must have been terrifying and yet, kind of a small thing, like they didn't know what he would grow up to be, but they knew that they loved their baby and that they wanted him to be okay, and they did everything that they could. And isn't that what most parents, the vast majority of parents are doing? They don't know what their child is going to grow up to be, but they want what's best for them and they do the best they can for them, whatever that might be. And that small thing changed the whole course of history because of who Moses grew up to be. How often is that true? Every person grows up to be someone who changes the world one way or another. Whether it's changing our community, changing just the way our family dynamic is or the way we work, or somebody who makes a big splash on the world stage, every person changes the world in some way. And the, those small things, those small things matter. And so 
we are surrounded by the whole cloud of witnesses, all of those people who've gone before us, all those ancestors in the faith, all those people who didn't see how it was going to turn out. They didn't receive the fullness of the promise in their earthly life, but they trusted it and they worked toward it and they ran with perseverance the race that was set before them. And without us, they are not made perfect. And without them, we are not made perfect. All of us together are the body of Christ. And it takes all of us in order for God's purpose to be fulfilled. So friends, remember, remember those who have gone before, call out the names of those ancestors who have gone on ahead, and also live like someone's ancestor. Live as if you are going to be the ancestor who is one day called out as having run the race with perseverance, having pursued the promise with everything you've got, even though you didn't see how it was going to turn out because that's what we're called to do, to be the ancestors of the next generation and the next and the next, to be a part of a cloud of witnesses that has already been growing for thousands and thousands of years. That's where God has placed us, in the midst of a great cloud, which means we're never in it alone. We're never running this race with no support, We're always surrounded by people who have done it before, who have already walked the road, and who have already experienced the full goodness of God, and they're waiting for us to play our part. And that is true of the generations that will come after us. They are waiting for us to play our part because apart from them, the ones who come later, we also cannot be made perfect. It takes all of us that God has in mind, all of us in the body of Christ. And it is Jesus himself who has already walked the road so that we know it is possible and we know that it leads to goodness and to glory, even if we can't see how just now. So that's what I'm thinking about today. And I'm thinking too about those who have joined that cloud of witnesses, those who have become our ancestors in this past year. Here at St. John's, um, we have celebrated the lives of 23 people since this time of last year. And that's a lot for our community. And um, they're missed. Those are people who are well-loved and missed. And there are those, of course, from previous years as well. So hold on to those memories and hold on to the light that they shone because that light is the light that Jesus shines through us all. And when we use their light as well that they have left behind, then we get to see just a little more glimpse. We still don't understand and we still don't know where it's going and we still don't know how it's going to turn out in our lifetimes, but we do know that in the bigger picture, there is a place prepared. We do know that there is a place prepared. So remember and give thanks and also walk in the light, run with perseverance the race that is set before you. So we're going to come to a little time of prayer. By little, I mean short, not insignificant. And I'll be using, of course, the first day of the month in our prayer book. If you don't have the most recent prayer book, then please drop a comment below. I'll be happy to send you one by email or to print one out for you and make sure that you get it. So friends, let us on this All Saints Day come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all those who have gone ahead, for those who have so faithfully pursued your promise, who have shown light on the way, 
and who now surround us as a great cloud of witnesses, continuing to give us the testimony that we need and the, the direction that we need to follow you more faithfully. On this first day of the month, we join our hearts as your church family to pray that we might see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. For the Bible study groups at St. John's and for the intercessory prayer group and the Sunday morning prayer group, that they may encounter you, living God, in word and in prayer. For the land, people, and governments of the nations of Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands. And for the families and friends of the 23 people to whom we have said goodbye in the past year, we ask for your continued blessing for your comfort and your presence to be known to them. Walk with us, O oh God, and lead us always on your way. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead. This Sunday, we will be in the sanctuary for an all age service on the story of Jonah, which is very exciting. It's being led with contributions from our Wednesday evening Bible study, which studied the book of Jonah during the month of October. We'll also be online with those same contributions from the Bible study. So I look forward to seeing you then and then again next week. So until then, cheers and peace be with you.